Hello, Jose Rodriguez here again. Today we're going to talk about the top mistakes that beginning printers do. And how do I know this? It's because these are the mistakes that I have made since I started doing this about, I would say since about the year 2000. So I don't have the time to tell you every single mistake I have made, but I compile a list of 15 of them. And I'll call this the 10, no, the 15 top printing mistakes beginners make, okay, I've made. So let's begin. These will not be necessarily in the order of importance or gravity, but just 15 or 16 that I have compiled together to give you an idea of what to avoid doing but the first and most important thing is when you choose to start printing at home, make sure that you know what you're getting into and do not buy too much printer. And by that, I mean a printer that is way above your current learning curve and something that may actually discourage you from home printing. So start, depending on what your level of expertise is, start with a printer that you will be able to handle and maintain that interest in home printing because believe me once you get bit by the bug that's it you are infected for life all right being too stubborn well that's my middle name when i was beginning i would not listen to anybody because i knew better and of course i was completely wrong a hundred percent of the time and it wasn't until I started listening to those who knew better than I that I started having some success at home printing. Jumping right in and thinking, oh, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. I didn't. Before the internet was as big as it is now, we had a few user forums that I would frequent in I thought I knew more than they did. And of course, that meant that for the next two to three whole years, I just drudged along, not really improving at all on my printing skills. And if I showed you some of those old, old original prints that I did, you would laugh me out of the room. And I would be glad to be laughed out of the room because they were simply horrific. And only because I refused to listen and to learn and to accept that I just did not know enough. All right. Not keeping track of all of your driver settings. Boy, I did this all the time. I would start printing. I would start coming up with all these combinations of settings. This and that and this rendering intent, that rendering intent, this color space, that color space sliders magenta yellow cyan sliders brightness contrast you name it did i keep records of any of that so that i will remember what i did wrong already because it just kept on being wrong and of course i did not keep any records so i would not know how to even get back to the original settings that i used because i did not keep any records at all when i started to fiddle with all of these driver settings. Wait, what? I have to calibrate my monitor? <gasps> what are you talking about? My monitor is calibrated out of the box. It's Cecil right there. No, 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 no. It's calibrated for you to be able to see super bright, contrasty internet pages, movies off your DVDs, videos on YouTube, everybody else's photographs. They look bright, saturated, punchy, but not natural. So yes, you do need to calibrate your monitor. The minute you want to start editing your images, you must calibrate it, period. What the heck are those driver settings for anyway? That's what I used to say. I don't care. I know what to choose. Well. What do you have in your driver settings? If you want to do the most basic setup, you have a paper choice and that depends on the paper. We have here some Canon Pro Luster, Photo Paper Pro Luster. Well, there is a setting on the Canon drivers specifically for that paper. 
then you have semi-gloss. There's another driver setting specifically for that semi-gloss paper and so on down the line. What happens? Well, at least with Canon printers, it actually does use an ICC profile. Many people did not know that, but when you pick the photo printing option, it's a little tab on your main driver window or page. You pick photo printing and then you pick the photo paper type that will automatically load the correct ICC profile for it. Okay. So yeah, that's what those settings are for. It says the paper thickness. It sets for the type of surface. It then chooses the ink density level for that particular surface. So many different, excuse me, I just burped. Many different levels of um, ink density that it requires for each type of surface. And so, yeah, important, of course it is. It also allows you to pick your resolution, not your image resolution, your printing resolution, which is measured in dots per inch as opposed to pixels per inch. So the higher the resolution, depending on your image, the better you will be able to resolve any fine detail that it contains. So yes, it is very important. Not choosing the correct paper choice. Yes, that we just talked about. If you print on Pro Luster, but yet choose matte by accident or some other drastically different paper surface, you're not going to get correct results because the printer is going to use some other profile to print on that paper and not the one that you should be using to begin with had you chosen the correct paper type. So very important. ICC profiles, I don't need no stinking profiles. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Whether you print with a driver or whether you print letting your editing application control color, you do need ICC profiles. Learn how to use them. Learn how to turn off color management in your driver so that your application doesn't double profile. That is one of the most common mistakes we beginners make. And then you end up with off color and you don't understand what happened. And then it's very simple. You double profile and that's why you're getting incorrect color. Forgetting to use either the driver or the editing application, but not both. I just touched on that earlier. What happens is this, when you print with the driver, and this is what I recommend you do at first, once you have certified your printer, doing the techniques that I taught you in another video. And you know that printer can now reproduce whatever you are sending it to unedited, meaning a standard image. And it produces a great result. Then you can move on to start editing your images on your calibrator monitor and begin to use ICC profiles through your editing application. But when you do that, you cannot have both entities trying to control color. So at that point, if you're gonna let the app or the editing app control color, then you turn it off at the driver. That way you don't have two competing color management sources outdoing each other and causing more harm than good. So when you let Photoshop, for instance, control color, then you have to turn off color management or color matching in your either Epson or Canon driver and vice versa, but never have both of them on. Ah, this is one I just recently committed, printing on the wrong side of the paper. Wow, do you get crappy results when you print on the wrong side of the paper. It will be immediately evident what you did. So how do you know which is the correct side of the paper? Some papers look identical on either the back or the front. Wet your finger. If you don't want to lick it, Use a little bit of water on your fingertips. Do this. Hold on to the paper for a couple of seconds and let go. The correct surface will stick to your slightly wet finger. That is the coated side. So that's the side that you will have facing up when you insert it into your paper feed. Very easy. An old timer's trick. It used to be used in the darkroom also to determine which was the light sensitive side of the photographic paper. 
forgetting to do a nozzle check when color suddenly changes. So that happened to me all the time. Back in the day when printers used to clog a heck of a lot more than they do now, if you just did not use them for one or two days, they would begin to clog. So if you do not run a nozzle check, you don't know your printer is clogged to begin with. And so once you start getting a couple of channels not producing enough ink by having many nozzles clogged, your color is going to be off. Okay, so you'll be using less color of say magenta and cyan and you'll have a predominance of yellow in your image, period. So if you're the type that does not do a nozzle check before any major printing job, you better start doing that because you may begin running some expensive paper through there only to find out when it's too late that your color is suddenly off and off because you have a partially clogged channel or channels. So run a nozzle check before any important print job. And then you'll be able to catch that and nip it in the bud. Not printing. Well, you know, I bought this $2,000 printer and God, I cannot afford to print on it. So I'm just going to tenderly take care of it by not using it. I'm just going to let it sit there. And then someday when I hit the lottery, I'm going to be able to afford those expensive inks and I'll put it back to use. Well, no, no, no. That printer is going to rebel against you. It's going to be so clogged and it's going to have a conniption fit when you start it up again. So false economy. Use your printer. Use your printer. Use your printer. If you cannot afford to use your printer, don't get a printer. Okay, I think we're, we're drifting into rant mode here. That's not what I meant to do. But I get very emotional when it comes to not using your printers. Assuming that all ICC profiles are perfect. Well, that's what you would assume, right? It comes from a reputable manufacturer and they should provide you with perfect ICC profiles. <clears throat> Often, no, that's not the case. Sometimes they do not. Sometimes they do not. And don't be shocked when it occurs. That's why I recommend that if you are really serious about printing, consider buying one of the, for example, x rights calibrator slash profile producers like the Color Monkey Photo is the uh, lowest cost one. Then you get into the higher end ones. And really, you don't need those yet until you are becoming a professional printer and you need to produce gallery quality prints repeatedly on a daily basis. And yes, move on to one of the expensive units. But the Color Monkey Photo will afford you the ability to produce excellent profiles, ones that will be actually a bit better than the ones you get from the paper manufacturers. Not necessarily Epson or Canon, but the third party type papers. You can always do a little bit better with your own custom profiles because you're making them for your particular machine. And every model family has variations between all of its numbers, all of its family members. So PA-100, for instance, out of a million PA-100s, there'll be a certain variability. So the one you get may be the best one that came out of the line, perfect. And the one Joe Blow next door gets will be the lemon, the one that just barely squeaked under the specs. So make sure that you consider making your own profiles. Never servicing your printer. Well, by that I mean self-servicing your printer. You have to learn little techniques that you should be performing on your printer every couple of months. Okay, there are lots of videos, not just mine, online that show you what to do. That is cleaning the wiper blades, cleaning the purge pads, just keeping the interior clean, make sure the sponges are not full of inky muck and so forth. Make sure that your rollers are being cleaned every couple of months to make sure there's no dust build up on them, especially if you're running a lot of fine art type media, especially the burrito type media. Little flakes of the coating tend to start, tend, they tend to come off and they're very fragile. So all of that stuff builds up on those sticky rubber rollers and you end up with rollers that no longer can grip paper. So many other aspects also that you can actually work on on your own. All right, so make sure that you do run your little maintenance cycles every couple of months. Change the ICC profile when switching paper. Ah, 
people, especially beginners, complain about irregular results, meaning when I use this particular paper combination and I see the profile, I get perfect results. But when I switch over to another paper, my color is off again. Well, that should not happen. Really, folks, just about every paper will print reasonably well with a universal profile. It will not be perfect. You'll get variations because the base of the paper has a different color. The coating reacts differently with ink and so forth. That's why you have individual profiles for each type of paper that are specifically for that particular paper and its characteristics. So when you printing on, say, ProLuster and you switch over to some other make by a third party source, make sure that you set your paper choice what they recommend you set it at. They'll give you those recommendations included in your instructions and make sure that then you then choose that profile for that particular paper. If you forget to do so, then your color will be off slightly and you will wonder what the heck is going on. Well, you missed it. You did not choose the correct ICC profile. And this has happened to a couple of people that I know today. All right. Number 15. No, actually, this is number 16. We already did 15 of them. Again, all of them I have been guilty of. Make lots of mistakes. I just told you what not to do. It's better if you actually make those mistakes because from those mistakes, you can learn a lot. And that's what I have done. I have committed every mistake under the sun. And I walked away from those knowing what not to do next time. And so that's what's keeping me able to, at least with all of the printers that I have, I have some predictability how they will produce a print. I know that when I print on the 3800 with this profile, with this paper, I expect it to match my monitor. My Pro 1, I expect it to match my monitor and so on. So that is it. It's good to make mistakes. Sometimes they cost you money and time and effort. But from those losses, we gain so much more. So keep that in mind. Continue pushing along. Of course, you can ask me whatever you want on my channel. And I'll, if I know the answer, I will try to help you. If I do not, I will tell you I do not. And I can lead you wherever I think you might find the answer to your question or your problem. All right, thank you so much. Please, I have received some Patreon signups. Wow, I really appreciate that. Remember, guys, this is the way that this channel survives this and YouTube monetization, and that is so unpredictable. But Patreon.com is a predictable source of income. So please think about committing to $1 or $2 a month, okay? And you know I'm going to promise you to bring you the best of the best. So once we establish a steady flow of income, then I can plan. Right now, as you see, I cannot plan about a new printer that comes along because I don't know if I'm going to have the revenue to be able to afford to buy XYZ printer and have it demonstrated here for you guys before you guys plunk out the money to buy such a printer. I would be the guinea pig, in other words, and I do it all for you guys. All right, thank you so much. Consider that. www.patreon.com forward slash jtoolman. Wow, my voice is really getting raspy. I hope I'm not catching something. <clears throat> the weather here has been up and down and super crazy. It cannot make up its mind. All right, thank you once again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.